Brooklyn Independent Television. I know it's been uh, about a year since we tested your hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we wanted to see you back for your annual audiometric test. Right. And I also wanted to ask you how you're doing with your hearing aids. Okay, I'm doing good. Yeah? Yeah, you know me. Okay, <laughs> I know you're a super user. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And what I tell you, they're like my Amex card. I don't leave home without them. <laughs> okay. My name is Gail. I noticed my hearing deficit, hmm, I'm going to say about 10 years ago. May I take a look in your ears? Sure. Can you take your devices out? Yeah. Okay. I would be out in social functions and gatherings, and there was no clarity. I found myself saying, huh, what, C can you repeat that, excuse me? And then the feedback was I was annoying the folks, and then I was getting annoyed. You know, so I said, well, maybe I need to check it out. And remember, this is the test that tells us about the middle ear, which is right behind the eardrum. Very good. The most common symptom of hearing loss is, is asking people to repeat themselves or mishearing things, not hearing on the phone, talking loud. Some people have trouble modulating their own voice if they don't hear well. Yeah, I'll be over there and I'll talk to you, okay? okay. One of the most common causes of hearing loss is getting older. Unfortunately, as people get older, many of them tend to uh, start to lose some hearing. Okay, can you hear me, Gail? Yes, I can. Okay, say hot dog. Hot dog. Ice cream. Ice cream. Baseball. Baseball. Cowboy. I was in denial, and then I just thought that maybe it was something that was going to clear up on its own. You know, so I didn't know that I had a hearing deficit, you know. So I used to clean them. I kept them clean and, you know, the Q-tips. So when I came to see Dr. Wigan, I thought he was going to blow them out. There was something in there, some fluid or something, drain it, and, you know, I'd keep going, but that wasn't the case at all. Mm -hmm. Can you put the right one in for me? Okay. Basically, my job is to give it to people straight. If they are having problems and there's no medical treatment for their hearing loss, then hearing aids are the way that they can be helped. Okay, let me just check the fit. I can't even see them. Very good. Yeah. That's Very good. Like it's a great fit. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, people can keep their good looks and still hear well. Okay, put that in your left ear, please. Mm -hmm. People, if their hands are not that good, would actually find this device pretty easy to manage. It's very easy to put in. The batteries are usually on the larger side. They're easy to manage. Many people would prefer to go for something a little bit smaller, perhaps a little bit more cosmetically appealing. This is a device um, called a Dual. The Epoch is basically a similar larger version with that receiver or wire in the ear technology. This one has a volume control. The microphone is up here, so that is picking up the sound from the environment. It's actually processed in here in the device, and then the output, the resulting sound, is transmitted down a wire into a speaker here that rests in the ear canal. So people that use these open fit devices, physically, many of them will say that they're much more comfortable than using, let's say, a large plastic device like this or the type that fits deep in the ear. Because this is, in many cases, we can keep the ear relatively open but still correct the hearing loss. Okay, so we detected the devices. This is telling us that it identified your devices. Okay. Okay, so we'll hit okay. Something that we've seen in the last couple of years become very popular is that hearing aids have become compatible with Bluetooth devices. For example, someone wearing a small hearing aid over the ear, if they're a big cell phone user, if they would like to connect, let's say, to music, or even a Bluetooth-enabled computer or a GPS in their car, they can use something called a streamer. The streamer pairs without any wires, either to their phone or some other Bluetooth device. I'm gonna lower it, and I want you to tell me when you can hear it, but not really understand it. Okay. Okay, because I want I want to challenge you and then bring you up from that point a little bit. Okay. Okay. He fitted me for a pair, and I came in, and he adjusted them, and um, it was just like a whole new life. Can still hear them. Can still hear. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we don't have as much work to do as we thought. No. Let's see. That's okay. a good thing. People should be screened for their hearing uh, when they're age 50 or 55, at least to get a baseline. Of course, if they're having problems, we need to see them sooner. Let's take a peek. We do offer free hearing screenings at Downstate. Actually, this month we're offering 
free hearing screening. Okay. The good news is that your hearing is stable. Hearing aids, unfortunately, do not prevent further loss of hearing. What they do is they keep the connection strong between the ear and the brain. If hearing loss is untreated, it can really affect their quality of life. Let's okay. disconnect. Yeah, that's perfect now. It's just a different world, really, being able to hear again, because it made me uh, not be as social as I wanted to be because I couldn't hear, and it, it just felt like I was left out, I was missing something. Uh, this one's gonna go here. What we try to teach people is that really they can be in charge of the situation. They can take charge of their hearing instead of their hearing taking charge of them. So if they're ready to get into the driver's seat, we can help them get there. We should see you back in about four to six months for a checkup. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.